Good afternoon and welcome to this BCCJ seminar. Uh, great to have uh, people joining us. The webinar is going to be on COVID-19, the impacts on uh, the Japanese and the global economy with a particular focus on the threats and opportunities in the world of finance. Um, this webinar is going to be recorded and posted online um, and the opinions that have expressed are personal to the people involved unless they state otherwise. Uh, in terms of the timings of this seminar, um, it is going to be up to an hour long. So if you have lots of questions, uh, we will take the full hour. If you don't, then um, we will take slightly less than an hour. Um, first of all, I'm going to provide very short introductions and then uh, invite both of our panelists to, to give a slightly longer self-introduction. Uh, I'm Naomi Davis. I'm the moderator and I'm a, the economic counsellor at the British Embassy here in Tokyo. First of all, I'd like to uh, introduce Kentaro Kiso uh, from Barclays, has a, a huge amount of experience in this, uh, uh, in this area and uh, I, I think he's, he's probably much better placed to, to tell you all about himself, so please do uh, uh, in, introduce yourself, uh, Kiso-san. Hi uh, everyone, thanks for uh, getting on board today. Uh, I know it's an uh, unprecedented time and uh, things are changing and happening every day. Um, I am currently working from home uh, for almost two weeks now. I am a president of uh, Barclay Security Limited in Japan. We do have a history of about 330 years uh, back in the UK. That's a quite a long uh, a tenor uh, from a 1690 where we actually started and in japan we we now have a celebrated uh, our 50th year anniversary last year so uh I, i'll make it short I'll, I'll cut a pause here uh please go ahead now thank you very much kiso san and uh takuchi san of um standard chartered uh great to have you here and um, work together uh on many occasions since i first arrived in japan uh, please do provide a little bit more inf information about yourself. Look forward to hearing about you. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Naomi, uh, for your kind introduction. Uh, thank you for having me for BCCJ this uh, webinar. Um, I'm a um, Japan CEO of the Standard Chartered Bank. I have been with uh, Standard Chartered Bank since December 2012 and the CEO of Japan since January 2015. Um, Standard Chartered Bank started uh, in mid 19th century. Uh, Chartered Bank started uh, in India, and the uh, Standard Bank started in South Africa. Uh, two banks merged uh, back in 1969, uh, which created the current structure. Um, our business is uh, pretty much focusing on the Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. Uh, this time we are facing the uh, uh, global pandemic, uh, which is an uh, unprecedented uh, scale. Um, pandemic started uh, from China and the Asia, uh, moving on to Europe and America. Uh, we are a little bit scared about the uh, further uh, uh, spread out to other region, um, which we can discuss later. Um, Standard Chartered Bank Japan, uh, first we came to Yokohama back in 1880. Uh, Meiji Jusannem. So uh, this year in 2020, we celebrate the 140 years uh, anniversary in Japan. Um, we have a bank branch and a security subsidiary here in Japan. In total, roughly uh, we have 140 people, and the, uh, we are do we are focusing on the uh, corporates and the institutional uh, clients, uh, which we are. Uh, uh, all the clients are facing a tough time as well. So this COVID-19 is uh, one of the uh, uh, most challenging time. I have been in financial uh, industry for uh, 36 years, and the, I have experienced uh, various uh, global scale uh, financial crises, uh, other crises, but uh, I will say this is the unprecedented uh, crisis. So uh, thank you all for having me. Back to you. Thank you very much. Well, in order to allow plenty 
plenty of time for questions for uh, uh, wider participants at the end. Let's let's jump straight in and, and let's sort of start with, with big picture stuff. So it'd um, be great to, to hear from you both there, uh, perhaps Takuchi-san first and then from, from Kisio-san. What do you think uh, has been or have been, if there's multiple uh, answers, that the most significant business impact or impacts from the COVID-19 situation so far? Uh, Takuchi-san. Thank you. Um, I think, uh, yeah, impact on economy so far uh, is uh, very broad and very significant. So um, I, I, I can't uh, cover everything, but uh, this time um, demand uh, dis um, uh, disappeared and the supply chain has been uh, disrupted. Um, so first, um, we are fighting against the uh, um, yeah, uh, pandemic and the, um, we have a social priority which we need to save the uh, lives and uh, save the uh, health system. So to some extent, we need to sacrifice economy and the business. So uh, lockdown of the uh, community and uh, stay at home order and also uh, control of the border and the quarantine uh, have a significant impact. And the direct impact came to the uh, um, airlines, uh, hotel and the hospitality, and the travel agents. And the, then um, manufacturing, manufacturing side, starting from the uh, lockdown in Wuhan, uh, global and the regional uh, supply chain has been disrupted, which impacted the uh, uh, supply side as well. Then, um, yeah, stay at home order and the, uh, each community um, individual consumption was stopped and economic activity stopped. So it's very broad. And also uh, for, for the duration perspective, we don't know when we can go back to the normal. So that is a uh, very significant and very broad. Back to you. Absolutely, it's been a huge impact. Uh, I'd love to hear what Kiso-san uh, has to say, particularly uh, uh, yeah, on, on the question to start with, but also uh, on one of the points that Takuchi-san -san made about sort of prioritising health over the, global over the global economy. Just uh, very useful to hear your thoughts on that, Kiso-san. Okay, uh, thanks very much Takuchi-san and uh, Naomi. I think uh, Takuchi-san has covered uh, quite an uh, extensive amount of uh, issues that we are facing. And uh, you mentioned uh, that the, the, it's a balancing act between uh, life-saving part and also uh, how to revive our economy back. And uh, there is uh, two school of thoughts here where if you look at the US states, uh, each state's governors are trying to still contain and uh, try to prolong the uh, lifting of a restriction. And uh, I th think both sides do have a have an argument. I think right now what we are seeing is this is uh, extra time and it's unprecedented events that we are going through. No one knows the right answer and uh, only history tells in hindsight. So uh, we just have to make the best uh, decision with uh, current information, whatever we have. And uh, at this moment, what we are seeing is uh, every single person is experiencing their own version of a, a pain moment financially or uh, health-wise or, uh, you know, mentally too. We start to realize that uh, some uh, outplacement, outplaced people working from home do carry a certain emotional and mental issue uh, staying at home in a very tight, restricted area. So uh, it is the nature of a human being to go outside and be active. And uh, this whole process was almost like a sudden pause button. It was like a forced, uh, movement and uh, whether it's a forced holiday you're having or a forced to leave, or let's say it's not a full scale redundancy, but uh, people do have an issue, and uh, we all will find the answer uh, in the later days. I'm I'm sorry that my my answer is not straightforward, but th th that is the extent of this challenging issue that we are facing. I absolutely agree, Kiso san This is definitely not a straightforward situation that we're in. It's a very challenging situation for, for everyone. I absolutely agree with that point. Um, but perhaps, I mean, what, what you've been saying, both of you, very much leads on to uh, sort of both thinking about the present and the future in terms of the, the big picture. So, 
you, you've been talking about the, the significant amount of disruption that there's, there's been to the way we do business, the way we work, the way we take leisure even. So what do you think is going to be the most disruptive that change that we'll see coming out of this situation and uh, after COVID-19? Uh, Kito Sam, perhaps you'd uh, be able to, to go first uh, on this one. Is it sort of leading, at, leading on from some of the things you were, you were saying earlier? Okay, I think uh, let's put this in a kind of context that we are a bank, we are a security broker, we are involved in a finance. So uh, the, the, the biggest uh, issue right now is uh, when are we going to see the, all the cash, you know, supplied by uh, policymakers, central authority, Fed, BOJ, ECBs are actually going through to be cascaded to the real economy. Because right now we are still seeing the gap between what you're seeing in the financial market, capital market, where Fed and all the central banks are taking almost like the, whatever it gets, is showing decent recovery. But at the same time, that's not exactly the picture of uh, what we are seeing and hearing in the main street in a real economy. And uh, this gap is uh, seemingly uh, getting wider day by day. So to me, uh, as a bank, somebody in the middle, in the middle of uh, policymakers versus real economy, um, we need to gauge uh, when we are going to face more defaults or when we have to need to take down some of the credit losses from our portfolio. Our portfolio is consists of private loan, mortgages, uh, small to medium size company lending, large company lending, and of course, other uh, security instruments. And uh, do we have enough time to gauge this risk and uh, make sure that uh, what exactly is going to unfold uh, in the coming months? It's still too early to tell. On the one hand, central banks and governments are doing everything they can to throw out the cash. But that cash has not in my mind, have reached the main street yet. Thank you, Kiso San. Oh, you're 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 going on to some of the the questions. I really have huge amounts of uh, questions about what you've been saying uh, about the, the impact on the global economy and, and on the financial services. But before we get into that, I, I'd like to give Takuchi San uh, the opportunity to talk about sort of the most disruptive changes that uh, are coming out of this COVID nineteen situation. Takuchi San, please. Yeah. Thank you. Um, most disruptive uh, change um, by this uh, COVID-19 is that uh, uh, san correctly referred to the, looks like uh, it's uh, pushing a pause button, sud button suddenly. Um, if we look at the uh, various chart graph, um, the economy uh, fall down from the cliff. So, um, um, and uh, we are all asked to uh, stay at home and uh, not to go out unless, uh, yeah, it is uh, essential or critical and urgent. So um, first, individual consumption uh, suddenly stopped uh, other than the uh, essential livelihood uh, uh, goods like that. And the, um, if we look at the uh, entire economy, individual consumption together with uh, uh, corporate investments, these are two big engines of the economic growth. I would say these two engines has suddenly stopped. So um, we are um, yeah, in the middle of the uh, uh, sky and I stopped the uh, two engine uh, of the airplane, which is very scary. Then it will go to the uh, bankruptcy and improvements uh, it may lead to the uh, 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 vicious cycle, uh, potentially, uh, and the, so economic will shrink. Um, and also, um, this pandemic will not be over until um, effective uh, vaccine is developed and uh, ready, which we don't know when. So um, that is the most disruptive um, change. I don't want to be too pessimistic, but uh, um, as of now, we don't see a uh, big uh, hope uh, yeah, uh, is coming in when that is a yeah, reality we are facing. Back to you, Neon. Thank you very much, Takuchi-san. A lot of uh, 
uh, a lot of areas to think about and consider they're absolutely right and it is it is scary being an airplane uh, and both engines of uh, the two key engines of the economy have stopped so absolutely well let, let's let's talk about the economy both japan's economy and the global economy uh moving on from, from the comments you both just made so uh, a statistic uh, and I have, I'm not sure of the source, apologies, uh, indicated that the UK's sort of uh, quarterly growth could fall by 36%. And, uh, uh, and another statistic I've heard is sort of about Japan's economy falling by 20% over the entire year. Um, I mean, th these are scary, scary numbers and not numbers we, we've, we've seen in our lifetimes and uh, <laughs> several lifetimes before that. I thought, well, maybe the Great Depression uh, in the 1930s, but there's scary times just useful to, to hear your thoughts your predictions uh, your forecasts uh, about the global economy uh, feel welcome to focus on japan as we are in japan uh, but we, we really um we do appreciate hearing your thoughts on on sort of the impact of covid19 on the global economy and perhaps whether you think there's going to be a v-shaped recovery or u-shaped recovery or uh, not so much of a recovery very grateful to hear your thoughts takaguchi saying can i ask you to to, to lead off on this and then kiso san afterwards be uh, great to hear your thoughts thank you yeah thank you naomi um before i mentioned about the uh, um, impact on the uh, global economy and um, let me mention about the uh, impact on financial markets uh, which kiso san already covered and um, the yeah um um, we have a various um, activity and aspects um, yeah, doing the uh, financial markets and the, I think there are potentially three waves. Um, first one is uh, liquidity risks. Um, we have seen the uh, um, very sharp liquidity crisis um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, all the uh, corporate country um, uh, enterprise uh, rushed to secure US dollar liquidity and the um, thanks to the uh, six central banks coordination um, it has been well contained uh, so far and the uh, US dollar liquidity has been pumped into the market uh, in an unprecedented uh, size of the amount so um, liquidity is back to the market but uh, second, would be, uh, second wave uh, if any would be uh, credit risks um, yeah corporates um, uh, institution are facing the uh, uh, shortage of the revenue and the uh, cost increments and the it will come to the uh, credit risks or bankruptcy so um, sooner or later we are facing a, a huge amount of the uh, bankruptcy in this area um, yeah uh, government uh, intervention especially fiscal authorities uh, rescue package plays a very important uh, role and the third wave, if any, would be a country risks. Uh, coupled with the uh, commodity price, um, yeah, uh, those countries uh, which are uh, highly dependent on the dependent on the uh, commodity and the trade-driven um, yeah economy uh, would face the uh, various challenges, which will be the uh, capital outflow and the uh, depreciation of the currency, uh, lack of demand. Uh, individual uh, consumption disappear. So, um, yeah, there may be uh, uh, yeah, broad uh, country risks coming up. Uh, in this area, IMF or other uh, multilateral agency uh, can play a very uh, important role. So we need to cope with the various risks coming up in the financial uh, yeah, markets. Thanks to the uh, various uh, efforts after the uh, global financial crisis, uh, entire financial industry is uh, yeah, uh, much uh, more sound and uh, robust. Uh, our capital base is uh, much uh, yeah, thicker uh, to absorb the potential loss and uh, to avoid the systematic risk. risk. So uh, yeah, financial industry can uh, try to contribute to support the uh, corporate or market or economy but uh, yeah, um, we need to uh, yeah, cope with the uh, various risks in the financial market. Coming to the uh, global economy, um, yeah, uh, recently IMF uh, revised the uh, World uh, Economic Outlook uh, in 2020. Uh, 
in the base scenario, uh, it will fall into the uh, minus 3%, uh, which is significant. But this is uh, based on the base scenario. If station uh, go much worse, then a minus uh, much wider uh, negative growth. So um, it is depending on the uh, how uh, we government and the uh, private sector uh, cope with the, uh, these challenges and how soon we can contain the uh, virus. So um, it's uncertain, but uh, it's uh, a reality. It's a big uh, impact in the global economy. Let me stop here. Back to Naomi. Thank you. Thank you very much, Takuchi-san. And just before Kiso-san starts his answer, I'd encourage uh, anyone who's listening in to uh, start asking some questions uh, using the question and answer button that you should have access to uh, through the software. If you're really struggling, uh, then uh, we can accept some questions through the Zoom chat. We prefer not to, to do it through that if possible, but please do uh, start answering questions uh, through the Q&A button. Um, uh, we, we look forward to, to hearing your thoughts and uh, particularly if you want to, to ask uh, Takuchi-san and Kiso-san to dig in a little bit more on those answers. Um, uh, I, I will ask Kiso-san to also talk about about sort of the the uh, the particular impacts on the on the financial markets because that is uh, what this seminar is, is really keen to address. So uh, uh, thank you. We've got we've got to start. Brilliant. And so we'll come to those shortly. But uh, Kiso San, uh, your thoughts on the impact on the global economy and the impact on uh, financial services sector. Look forward to hearing from you. Uh, I told you that I've been in the market for over three decades, but uh, this is a kind of a velocity that I have never experienced. 22 million of a people employed in four weeks in the United States. And uh, today I saw the uh, another McKinsey report that uh, a quarter of our European private sector labor force will lose their jobs this year. So that's very pessimistic scenario, but uh, nevertheless, uh, we have to deal with this day, day by day. And um, we have also experienced a lot of a drawdown of uh, our commitment line, so-called revolver. Uh, from a corporates every single day. So uh, uh, even if Fed or BOJ or, or Bank of England or ECB is giving market a wall of cash uh, through their new program, new lending program or CP buying program, um, still corporates are coming to us, to the bank, to pull the facility out, money out. That's one liquidity part. And two, he mentioned about credit insolvency issue. Yes, uh, uh, the more this uh, lockdown drags on, there will be a more need for cash uh, to pay day-to-day -day, uh, operation. And uh, what we are seeing in UK is uh, there is uh, several program. One is uh, this uh, uh, corporate business uh, interrupt interruption lending program. Uh, and the other one was a CCFF called uh, COVID-19 corporate financing facility. I think uh, Bank of England in, is very, very keen to make sure that the money actually reaches the end uh, user who are in need of it. And uh, right now we are dealing with it. Through this program, we have already approved over 1,600 uh, corporate lending. That's, that's a staggering number within a two or three weeks. And uh, the other thing is, uh, the risk we carry right now in terms of solvency and credit, uh, that is uh, also shown in some of the numbers uh, you see, saw from uh, U.S. banks last week. There was uh, six U.S. banks putting a credit reserve uh, for Q1, only the first quarter, January to uh, March. They put $25.4 billion. That's, again, a very big number among uh, five, six banks. And uh, if you look back to Lehman time, um, Lehman days, these reserves were a lot, lot, lot bigger. And it, that goes, went on for about three years, three years every quarter, right? We just start to see this, this quarter, 25 billion from five US bank. You can easily imagine that can be multiplied by many. But the accounting methodology is different right now. We are taking a more forward-looking uh, kind of a credit loss uh, procedure. So uh, people do think that uh, maybe we can actually take down some of these credit loss at early stage. 
not like a prolonged period, like a three or four years. So we will see. We are probably better prepared to how to deal with these uh, credit insolvency issue going forward. And uh, as Takebsa mentioned, the country risk, um, I think a G7, G20 nation together with the IMF is talking about uh, another uh, sort of payment holiday for even, uh, uh, you know, uh, developing country. Uh, they do have a lot of dollar denominated asset. And as you can see, dash for dollar means there's a very high demand for dollar and uh, some of the people who's borrowing money in denominated with dollar uh, is suffering uh, again. So uh, I think IMFs and G7 are taking very immediate approach and uh, to remediation. Uh, back to you. Um, Thank you very much, Kisa san um, Well, both of you have talked about uh, comparing the current situation uh, to the global financial crisis sort of 2008, 2009. Uh, I, I, as I said, you, you both mentioned it. Is there anything else that either of you would like to say on the similarities and the differences between the current situation uh, and what was going on sort of uh, brilliant, excellent <laughs> uh, in uh, 11, 12 years ago. Uh, Takuchi san, you look very keen, so I'll come, in to, come to you first and uh, uh, perhaps Takuchi san. I'll... Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Naomi. Um, yes, um, we naturally compared to the uh, global financial crisis, uh, which started uh, back in 2008, um, magnitude and velocity. Yeah, um, we don't know um, final shape, but uh, yeah, we naturally compared to a uh, uh, global fin financial crisis. But another crisis I would like to mention and refer is um, Evora fever, um, which outbreak in the Western Africa back in 2014. So this um, COVID-19 is not just an economic crisis or financial crisis. It's a pandemic, global pandemic. Um, yeah, looking back, Evora fever uh, back in 2014, um, yeah, we luckily uh, contained uh, that uh, yeah, pandemic within the uh, uh, smaller region, uh, West Africa, and uh, it didn't spread out for the global scale, uh, not global pandemic, but uh, um, we Standard Chartered Bank have our um, presence in West Africa and the uh, Cote d'Ivoire, even Sierra Leone. Uh, yeah, so I had a chance to uh, listen to the uh, story of the uh, Sierra Leone, uh, the time CEO. Um, it was very scary. Uh, and the, now COVID-19 uh, moved to the, uh, as I mentioned, from Asia to Europe and America, um, Latin America as well. Um, I'm very much concerned about the uh, situation in Africa. Um, WHO is also pointing out. Um, if we um, consider the uh, um, various uh, preventive uh, actions we have taken, uh, washing the hands and social distancing, and yeah, stay at home, the situation in Africa, uh, they can't do washing hands every day and the, they can't take a, a social distance. Uh, so, um, and also, if it comes to the uh, food crisis, uh, yeah, lovely food, yeah, it will go to the uh, social unrest as well. So, um, yeah, uh, we should consider the economic impact, but uh, we should think about the uh, potential uh, big uh, risks uh, in the global scale. This is a global pandemic, and the, uh, even though each country contain at some stage, but until uh, we contain globally, uh, this uh, risk will not uh, go away. Absolutely right. We need to be thinking uh, about other uh, similar health crises that we've seen recently. And uh, thank you for, for telling us about sort of your experience in, in working through the Ebola crisis and uh, colleagues that you're aware of working through that. Kiso san, do you have any uh, thoughts uh, and any additions you'd like to talk about in terms of similarity and difference between this situation and the global financial crisis or, or other health emergencies? It, as you say, during your three decades in the financial services sector, you've uh, you've experienced or worked through? Sure, so uh, events, uh, what we call global uh, financial crisis, GFC or Lehman crisis in 2008-9 uh, comes very uh, close to my mind because uh, Barclays actually purchased uh, Lehman's US franchise uh, on that particular year. And uh, 
those years, uh, as you remember, bankers like us were labeled as a bad people, bad bankers, and uh, all the crises were created from banking sector. Uh, if you remember, it was a subprime loan with the CDOs of the world. And uh, I think it's a bit of time to through to the main street. And that's probably why the, the big difference this time, it, as I said, it's a sudden pause button on the real economy. And where banks now, we have spent last 12 years stress test after stress test. So uh, we now have an ample liquidity and capital. Uh, we never had this much liquidity or capital ratio in our whatever 10, 20 year history, just in a short history. But uh, given that uh, we are now a part of a social infrastructure to help uh, economy, um, it was not the case last time. It was the case that uh, we, we were supposed to be cured. Uh, 12 years ago. Now we are on the government side and the policy makers side. So uh, net net, there is a lot of uh, uh, remediation that we can work together with government and policy makers. And that's what we are, uh, you know, conducting day and day. People put the analogy, but uh, to me, uh, how we are working, functioning in the market as a social infrastructure. Absolutely understood. No, d d definitely. Uh better to be on the side where you are seen in a positive light as assisting and helping during this crisis. A much more comfortable position for you to be in despite the, uh, the other many challenges that the sector is facing. Um, so I think I'm going, going to ask one more question before we move on to the Q&A that have been coming in. And thank you very much to everyone who's been asking uh, questions. Um, I, I might combine some of them and some of them might be answered by this next question, um, but uh, we'll try and get through as many as we can. So. Um, I'd just like to, to hear um, uh, perhaps Kiso-san and then Takuchi-san about your thoughts about the, uh, the supplementary draft budget that the government of Japan uh, announced and then updated last week and that is uh, uh, going to the diet very soon. Be, uh, uh, as well as sort of about the Bank of Japan as well. I know they've been uh, announcing lots of measures recently. Sort of any thoughts on their packages and uh, anything you would like to see them go a bit further on or, or do a bit more on? Um, so yeah, uh, any thoughts on that be be very welcome. Thank you. Uh, yes. So may maybe I'll start with the uh, central banks. Uh, as I said, Fed is taking whatever it takes approach that uh, they tr try to overdo rather than do less. So uh, they see probably more risk of uh, missing out on not doing anything extra. So uh, to me, uh, you probably heard that the BlackRock is uh, sort of advising Fed what to do, what, how to behave in the market. So they started by CP, they started by corporate bond. They're now extending their purchase into, uh, of course, mortgages and high yield or some of the so-called fallen angel corporates who have a less access to a cash right now. So uh, um, what, on the other hand, BOJ is doing, they have been doing quite a lot already in the last several years. So uh, people do feel that the BOJ is a bit of out of tool and uh, BOJ has been increasing their CP purchase, increasing their uh, ETF uh, equity purchase, but net net there is nothing uh, grand or nothing brand new coming out from BOJ. Uh, I personally think that the BOJ is still hiding few few more things underneath their sleeves and uh, we will be positively surprised by how they're going to approach to this market. But net net, um, central banks are doing everything they can. And uh, it will take a bit of time to, again, cascade it to, to the real economy. The real economy will feel the impact. Uh, on the government side, um, I think uh, the size of a Japanese supplementary budget, which is a 108 trillion yen, which is almost close to 20% of GDP. Again, humongous number staggering number. I don't know how we're going to finance it, but uh, the process to give this cash out to people is still taking a lot of bureaucratic process and cumbersome. Uh, documentation work is required. Unlike in UK or US, UK and US, I think the banks are facing people. So uh, there will be a lot less uh, paperwork. That's what I'm hearing at least. And uh, people will probably have another few weeks to wait before they really see the cash. Um, I, I, th this is a kind of a, you know, 
cash, cash, cash. I mean, I heard that the uh, governor of uh, New York talking about ventilator, ventilator, ventilator. <laughs> but uh, in, in a real market, it's a cash, cash, cash. And uh, as soon as you see it, uh, things will start to kind of move and go on. So uh, um, I would say uh, what, what, whatever we're seeing right now is definitely uh, 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 helped by the speed of uh, how policymakers going to move. Back to you. Absolutely understood. Well, as a, as a Japanese taxpayer, you'll be pleased to hear that rather than the, the full 108 trillion yen being financed by more JGBs, the, uh, the government of Japan is, I think, planning only to uh, uh, get another 16.7, 16.8 trillion JGB. So hopefully that's a, a little bit of comfort to you. But yes, it's still huge numbers that we're talking about. Um, uh, Takuchi san be uh, great to hear your thoughts on the, the, the supplementary budget and uh, uh, the actions by the Bank of Japan, please. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, first, um, yeah, Bank of Japan or Monetary Authority, um, I'm pre pretty much satisfied so far uh, because of the uh, speed and the, um, yeah, uh, they, uh, yeah, launched unprecedented among the um, the liquidity and uh, another aspect uh, i'm satisfied is that the international coordination so um financial market uh, there's no border if we can't close the border we can't put in the uh, quarantine so international coordination is uh, very important in this area so so far bank of japan um, together with the other central banks they have done the uh, right approach for the crisis management uh, early enough and the uh, impactful measurement uh, early on. Moving to the uh, um, yeah, uh, Japan government, um, yeah, we can expect more, um, but I will say each country, each fiscal authority, they have uh, some constraint, political constraint, fiscal constraint, um, yeah, various things. Uh, and the, what we expected more was a much speedy and a simple um, yeah, relief package. Um, yeah, uh, through the uh, uh, various uh, political dialogue, um, it expanded to the nationwide, every individual. But uh, yeah, it is not so simple, transparency, not uh, rapid enough. So uh, that is my comment. And the, um, from the economic perspective, not just uh, uh, 100,000 yen or some rescue, but uh, whether we can uh, save the uh, corporates, we can save the individual, that is a critical point. So, um, yeah, of course, uh, there is no uh, more than sufficient, uh, but uh, yeah, whether we can save the entire economy, um, it is not realistic to rescue all the corporates or the individual, but uh, as a whole, whether uh, government can save the uh, uh, economy uh, from the uh, potential collapse of the uh, economy. That is a key essence. In that context, as a financial sector, uh, which I mentioned that uh, we have now a uh, much robust um, yeah, capital and the liquidity buffer, we have been thinking how we can contribute in combating this uh, coronavirus and the economic crisis. So, First, um, yeah, similar to other banks, we withdrew the uh, final dividend payment this year, and the, uh, also uh, we uh, yeah, uh, suspended the uh, share buyback. So at this moment, uh, we, yeah, that is a disappointment to our shareholders, but uh, it is more important to keep our liquidity and to keep our buffer and to support the economy. Based on that, uh, we launched one billion dollar um, yeah, special lending facility, which we are trying to uh, support our client, which is uh, fighting against the uh, um, coronavirus in terms of the supply chain, um, yeah, procurement of the uh, uh, coronavirus related goods and the um, yeah, devices. And the third, uh, we launched the uh, uh, 50 million uh, fund which we are working on to donate energy oil. Um, so, um, yeah, we try to be ethical. We try to be, um, yeah, uh, good uh, 
good uh, resident of the community uh, here and there. Uh, we have a brand promise globally. It's uh, here for good. So even in Japan, we are trying and we are looking into how we can contribute to the community. Um, one of the uh, big encouragement story uh, we came across recently is uh, Captain Tom Moore uh, fundraising. So um, yeah, 99 years old uh, captain in UK is raising a fund, which is very ethical. So uh, we are trying to be ethical and try to, try to contribute uh, in this uh, global crisis. Let me stop here, back to you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much to everyone who's been answering questions. I, I'm afraid I don't think we're going to have a chance to answer all of them, but hopefully some of them have uh, partially been answered already um, in the discussions and in the, in the information that Takisa San and Takeuchi San have provided. Um, I'm going to start with, with one of the, the big picture questions that, that's come in there from David Bickle. Um, he's asking, um, sort of mentioning that COVID-19 uh, may also have a geopolitical impact. And uh, are there any scenarios you have for the US-China relations and uh, what will be the impact for economic uh, recovery under those uh, circumstances? So uh, do either of you have any um, particular comments or, or scenarios that you'd like to, to mention on this? Um, Kiso San, can I come to you first on, on this uh, very, very big picture question? Sure, so it's a, it's a $100 million question. Uh, I think uh, the first reaction we have seen so far is uh, anti-globalization and localization. So uh, you don't need to name, you know, you know, these leaders, but uh, let's say Trump, you know, he's America first uh, mantra is uh, de definitely actually being pushed through in a, a lot wider scale. Uh, every country wants to block their border. Every country wants to hoard some of the uh, uh, protective, you know, uh, uh, gear. And uh, on the other hand, uh, there is a, a global institution like a United Nations or WTO trying to uh, make an impact on people's day to day. But uh, net net, uh, what we are hearing is uh, they are not probably uh, standing up to their expectation. And uh, there is a variety of uh, uh, remediation and uh, uh, strategies putting out from each country and not necessarily uh, working unitedly hand in hand. Uh, if you look at the newspaper article that uh, a lot of scientists or uh, people in the medical sector they all calling for united effort and action but at the same time politicians turned out to be a lot more thinking about their own country and it, it, it is very difficult time that uh, you just need to have a very very strong leader not only strong let's say compassionate leader to uh, talk to the not to only your, your nation's people but to the whole world such figure in the world market right now so we might have to endure a little bit longer for all these um, localized voices back to you Jisan, do you have anything you'd like to add yeah yeah thank you excellent question David um, your question is um, uh, with regard to a geopolitical um, yeah aspect um, yeah my personal view is that uh, definitely there will be a uh, more tension from the geopolitical perspective. Uh, before um, yeah, uh, COVID-19, uh, we have seen the uh, uh, severe trade tension between US and the, uh, China. Uh, but uh, now we are uh, seeing the, uh, some battle over WHO and others. And the, um, from China, uh, China has been uh, driving the uh, uh, so-called One Belt, One Road initiative. On top of that initiative, now China is driving so-called um, yeah, health, health Silk Road initiative uh, to the target countries, and uh, it will enhance the uh, uh, tension between China and uh, uh, some friend country and others. Um, it will lead to the uh, uh, yeah, remodeling of the uh, uh, supply chain uh, uh, yeah, network, uh, from the uh, various multinational corporate, 
many corporates, um, yeah, uh, depends on the uh, uh, supply chain in China uh, and the, yeah, they experience the uh, uh, various uh, tough situation, uh, yeah, uh, because of the disruption. So maybe uh, reshoring of the uh, uh, supply uh, supplier uh, back to the uh, home country and uh, or remodeling the, the supply chain, uh, uh, that would be a uh, yeah, potential outcome after the uh, uh, COVID-19 and the geopolitical tension. That's my thought. Back to you. Thank you, Takeuchi san I, I think you've also answered or begun to answer some, some of the other questions that we've uh, we've had coming in. So thank you very much. That uh, that does help. So we are asking about sort of supply chains uh, shortening or diversification, as you've been been talking uh, talking about that. Um, I, I guess sort of what one one of the questions that sort of uh, is uh, perhaps more more positive is sort of which countries are best positioned to to withstand this situation so uh, it'd be great to, to hear your thoughts your your answers on that one um, and, and perhaps as part of that we can actually take a, a generally more positive view so what are the opportunities coming out of this are there any silver linings if so what are they um, so it'd be great to, to hear your thoughts on on any positive lessons or any big changes that you think might be happening in terms of uh, how financial services work and sort of is this an opportunity is this a silver lining uh, it'd be great to hear both of your thoughts um, on, on those questions. There seem to be quite, quite a lot of questions uh, uh, around that sort of positive theme of try, trying to find something positive to think, out, think about after this. So uh, takeuchi san perhaps I can come to you first on this. Uh, and any silver linings, any opportunities? And of course, a particular focus on the financial services sector would be great. Yeah, thank you, Naomi. Uh, great question. Um, you mentioned about the uh, possible recovery uh, V-shape recovery, U-shape recovery, L-shape, which no one knows at this moment. And the, uh, my personal view is that uh, we will never come back to the old norm, old normal. Um, yeah, after uh, experiencing this uh, global pandemic and the global economic crisis, uh, we will just shift to the uh, new normal. And the, um, so then, what is the new normal? and any uh, positive side uh, in the uh, new uh, near future. Um, I don't want to be too pessimistic, uh, but uh, yeah, um, we are in the middle of the uh, great uncertainty. There is a Chinese, Chinese saying that uh, in every crisis, there are always uh, opportunities. So, um, after experience uh, these um, crises, I think uh, individual corporates uh, will adjust, adapt, and uh, to survive and uh, to create a new future. Um, I'd like to mention about the three aspects. First one is uh, digital transformation. Um, yeah, uh, now uh, work from home, remote working, we, every individual is, is experiencing own uh, digitalization, so to say. On top of the uh, e-commerce and uh, this digitalization for uh, office work, um, yeah, digitalization will spread out in, in the uh, medical uh, station, education station, and uh, I think it will accelerate, and that there will be a positive side in the productivity and the new way of the living or new way of the working like that. That is one. Second one is the, um, yeah, um, as I mentioned, supply chain will be remodeled. And the, um, the driver is not economic optimization, but more, um, yeah, sustainability, um, yeah, uh, risk conscious or security or like that. So uh, in the new uh, revised, uh, yeah, uh, regional global supply chain model, uh, it will, yeah, I hope it will be a more sustainable and a more community driven, so to say. And the third one is, uh, yeah, ethical growth. Um, yeah, uh, the global economy has enjoyed the uh, con uh, constant growth for decades. But now, this year, uh, first time to uh, experience a great setback. And then if we go back to the normal, or, or new normal, shifted to new normal, 
we should think about the uh, what is a uh, ethical uh, economic activity. So ethical investment, ethical um, yeah uh, finance. Uh, those are the very important uh, yeah uh, metrics. So I can't point out that any country, any <laughs> ideal uh, location, market, but uh, those are um, yeah silver lining. I hope. Uh, which I would like to see in the future. Back to you. Thank you very much, sir. That's a very helpful answer. Thank you. Um, Kisa, I'd be very keen to, to hear your thoughts. And perhaps I can throw in a curveball here, as well as talking about the, the silver linings and the positives. Are there any particular sectors that uh, you think might face insolvency or bankruptcy? see risk sort of more so than other sectors so uh, I'll, I'll throw that curveball to you and then, then I'll bounce it back to takeuchi san for a couple of final comments uh, so uh, silver linings and, and major issues thank you okay let, let me talk about the easier one silver lining I think uh, I completely echo with uh, takeuchi san's sentiment I think uh, when people are experiencing a life-changing uh, 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 period um, they they look out for a new uh, kind of a compass engage to uh, you know life. Um, we we have actually embarked on many uh, sort of a ethical projects too, and uh, we also do ha just started a hundred million COVID nineteen community aid package, which is a you know hundred million pounds. Uh, again, it's a big amount for charity work, and. Uh, Internally, we also have this uh, share your story uh, effort. So on the uh, internet, we actually ask for your story that uh, how are you communicate, you know, contributing to your community in uh, this uh, very, very turbulent time. And uh, there is a number of new story coming out and uh, up on our internal web uh, of uh, people helping and uh, doing good to uh, their community. And uh, it, it's quite encouraging uh, and, and enlightening to see some of these uh, stories uh, from the rest of the world. Um, I, I mentioned about uh, kind of a new leader uh, that uh, we, we are looking for. This is a people do actually have different expectation for the person that you want to call as a leader. And uh, to me, it's a compassionate leader is a de definitely one, one thing. And th that's how whole society would change to uh, 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 long for. And that, to me, is a positive change. Uh, the other positive change is, uh, if you remember three months ago, what was the biggest theme in a the newspaper on in any media or, or G7, G20, Davos, wherever you go? It was about, uh, you know, how to uh, eliminate the coal burning industry. And that we talked about green, uh, Greta was a, was a symbol. And uh, suddenly we are now in a greener phase. Um, we seeing a cleaner air in a big cities and uh, coal fire powers are, uh, uh, you know, producing, uh, you know, energy at 50% uh, of a peak. So uh, net net, we start to find out that, hey, we can do this. You know, it, yes, it was a forced button, but uh, I think market is spending a lot less energy and uh, let, burning a lot less coal, but still life goes on. So people start to realize that uh, work from home is possible. You don't need to commute two hours just to attend the one meeting. And, uh, you know, you can rather stay at home and be with your family and uh, do, make more productive work. So uh, I think a uh, Japan model of uh, working long hours and uh, having a very tough time adjusting into a new work life balance regime. I think now we are suddenly realizing that, oh, this is doable, technically doable. Why do we need to go back to the old regime? In the after corona regime, there will be uh, people who start to put more emphasis on their life and what their heart is looking for. So that is definitely a positive change to me. That, that's a, probably a major positive change. When you talk about the industry that's going to suffer, I think uh, government is now focused on job creation or keeping uh, jobs intact. I think the society uh, might not need a big uh, airline company or big hotel chain in two years time. Their standard might not be fully recovered. Maybe we might recover 70% or 
in a pessimistic case, 50%. We end up traveling less. We will be very happy sitting at home. So uh, I, I, th I think there is a uh, several industries that's going to suffer fundamentally structural changes. And uh, we just need to be very careful that uh, um, where government is putting money is the, the, their concern is more about the job, less about uh, kind of a fundamental changes in the industry itself. Thank you very much, Kisio-san. Well, we are into our final minute, uh, I think. So my apologies to everyone whose questions we haven't got to. But I, I'd like to invite uh, Takeuchi-san and then Kisio-san just to say uh, any sort of final sort of 30 seconds of uh, final thoughts that you have that, that you'd uh, like people to take, take away with them. Takeuchi-san. Okay, very briefly, yeah, thank, I would like to thank BCCJ to organize this, uh, yeah, webinar, very timely. And uh, yeah, thank you for uh, Naomi and uh, Chiso-san uh, having me. And uh, thank you for all the participants, more than 50 people uh, taking time and joining. I think uh, it's, uh, we are facing a very severe challenge. It's time to put together rather than criticize or complaining each other. So this is a right webinar in the right time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Kiso-san, any final comments from you? Comments yes, from so uh, people are now concerned about how quickly we can get out of this situation. I think uh, many European countries, including Germany, are talking about how to lift the curve uh, gradually, like a phase one, two, three. And uh, as I said, US states are also fighting for a liberate state movement. Um, my, my gut tells me that uh, uh, this whole thing might last a bit longer. So we have to be, you know, ready for enduring period to come. Uh, but as uh, Takeuchi mentioned, I think this is the right timing to talk about these things because uh, it's just an entry point for all of us to make, get into a new regime and new uh, after Corona period. So uh, um, as I said, uh, we, we need to kind of focus on the positive side. We need to focus on what we can do together uh, rather than, uh, you know, talking about the each micro um, management of uh, uh, their, their own individual issues. So um, um, I, I do thank you for all the audience today. And uh, thanks for uh, uh, Naomi and uh, Sarah for arrangement. And thanks Takeuchi-san for very interesting thoughts. Uh, I, I think we should exchange some of our thoughts more often. Thank you. That sounds like an excellent idea. Thank you both so much for sharing your knowledge, your experience, your thoughts with us this afternoon. And thank you to all the attendees. Apologies, this is finishing two minutes late. Uh, hope you have a good rest of the afternoon and thank you so much for, for attending. Thank you very much.